Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, class by Prabhupada. Krishna, we refer to the Supreme Personality of God along with his many expansions. He is expanded by his plenary parts and parcels, his differentiated parts and parcels, and his different energies. Krishna, in other words, means everything and includes everything. Generally, however, we should understand Krishna to mean Krishna and his personal expansions. Krishna expands himself as Vuladeva, Sankarshan, Vasudeva, Aniruddha, Pradhyumna, Rama, Nursingha, Varaha, as well as many other incarnations and innumerable Vishnu expansions. These are described in the Srimad Bhagavatam to be as numerous as the uncountable waves. So Krishna includes all such expansions as well as his pure devotees. In the Brahma Sanghita, it is stated that Krishna's expansions are all complete in eternity, blissfulness, and cognizance. <laughs> Devotional service means to prosecute Krishna conscious activities which are favorable to the transcendental pleasure of the Supreme Lord Krishna, and any activities which are not favorable to the transcendental favor of the Lord cannot be accepted as devotional service. So, <clears throat> Krishna does not mean alone. Krishna is not in person. He is person and he expands in so many persons. Eka Bahusham. He is one, but he expands himself to innumerable forms. The Vishnu forms, they are known as Shangsha. And the servitor form, uh, the living entities, they are also expansion of Vishnu, part and parcel, uh, differentiated, vivin nangs. So everything expansion of Krishna, parasya brahmana shakti, parasya brahmana shakti, sarvidam akhilam jagat. Uh, Whatever we see, experience within this world, within this universe, they are simply expansion of the energy of Krishna. Just like fire has got two energies, heat and light, similarly oh, Krishna is expanding by his two energies, the material energy and the spiritual energy. So this material world is expansion of his material energy, and we are marginal. We are also energy. We are not energetic. Uh, we are not purusha. We are prakriti. In the Bhagavad Gita, the living entities have been described as prakriti. Aparayam itasthu vidhi me prakritiṁ para. After describing the material energies, earth, water, air, fire, sky, mind, intelligence, ego, Krishna says, aparayam, all these energies, separated energies, material energies, they are apara, inferior. But that is also Krishna's energy. Uh, inferior means not actually inferior because there, there cannot be anything inferior which is emanating from Krishna. The inferior in this sense, uh, by our 
एबजेंस ऑफ कृष्ण कॉन्शियस बिकॉज वी हैव कम हियर इन दिस मेटीरियल वर्ल्ड टू एंजॉय टू आर सेटिस्फाइड सेंस सेटिस्फैक्शन सेंस ग्रेटिफिकेशन वी हैव मेड इट इनफीरियर otherwise it is not in fear uh, one who knows how to utilize this energy for him it is not in fear ah uh, nirbandhe krishna sambandhe yukta vairagam ucch one who does not know how to utilize this material energy for the purpose of krishna Uh, for them it is inferior uh, otherwise adva again absolute idam hi visham bhagavan hi vetara narad muni has described before bas de idam hi visham bhagavan hi vetara it appears like different but actually uh krishna mahabhagavat this is the vision of mahabhag not ordinary mahabhagavat uh sthavar jangam dekhe na dekhe tar murti uh ye mahabhagavat sees a tree or an animal like he does not see the form But he sees he is Ishta Dev Murti. He sees there Krishna. Actually, Krishna is there as Paramatma. So he sees Paramatma. He does not see the external body. Uh, so Krishna's two energies, inferior means. where krishna consciousness is almost absent that is inferior when there is krishna consciousness that is no more inferior that is superior ah. so krishna says aparayam itasu vidhi me prakritim para after all any energy prakriti so the mahabadi flesh of her mistakes to elevate the living entities to the standard of purusha the supreme but actually it is not so it is prakriti prakriti means predominated and purush means predominator and actually there is our position we are not predominator artificially i am thinking that i am predominant that is my illusion i am not predominant eh? nobody is predominant ah uh, predominant is krishna ah uh, matta paradaro nanya kinti jasti dananja he is predominant ah uh, aham sarvasya prabhava matta sarvam prabhat so prakriti and purush krishna is purush uh, purusham shashatam arjuna has described purusham shashatam para brahma param dham pavitram paramam bhava purusham shashatam adyam you are the original purush enjoy uh, that is krishna kaas if we know that krishna is the original person enjoy and we are simply enjoyed we are meant for being enjoyed not to take the post of enjoyer here in this material world everyone is artificially trying to become enjoyer both men and women uh, that is illusion nobody is enjoy bhoktaram jagadavasam sarvalokamayasaram the supreme enjoyer is krishna 
so just like prakriti purush we can get one idea husband and wife husband is purush wife is prakriti so if the wife is faithful all is trying to serve the husband eh uh, all is to make your husband pleased and husband takes care of the wife for all her necessities of life as that home life becomes very beautiful and happy similarly krishna is the supreme purusha enjoy we living entities if we simply try to serve him and make him happy as the gopis did then it is very uh congenial atmosphere as it was in vrindavan everyone is serving krishna everyone is trying to please krishna the birds the bees the trees the land the water the coward boys the gopis krishna's father mother elderly people everyone the center point is krishna that is binda so we can have brindavan anywhere and everywhere brindavan is not that limited it is not material as krishna is not limited krishna says in the brahma sangita गोलोके व निवसती अखिलात्मभूत जैसे कृष्ण से दैट पत्र पुष्प फल तोयम ज्योमि भक्ता प्रजिच्छ तद हम असना ना वन कैन से कृष्ण इज फार फार आवे इन द गोलोक वृंदावन हाउ यू लीड दैट इज मेटीरियल कॉन्सेप्शन Krishna can eat even he is in Goloka Vrindavan, provided the food stuff is offered by devotee. Ji jo me bhaktiya prajachit. It is the question of bhakti. Then Krishna eats. Krishna is present in his Goloka Vrindavan, in his dhama. Ah, he does not go out. But his expansion goes out and takes accept the service of the devotee. This is the uh, Bhagavat Tattva Vigyana. One should understand the Bhagavat Tattva Vigyana. It is a science how he takes. Uh, we have got our limited sense uh, that I am sitting here. If you offer my food stuff some years off from me, I cannot reach because I am limited. But Krishna can expand His hand; He Himself comes. Swami uh, was purattad. Krishna becomes manifest to the devotee. Uh, अतः श्रीकृष्ण नामादि नवभवित ग्राह्यम इंद्रिय सेवनमुखी ही जीव भादो वेन वन बिकम्स डिवोटी बिगिनिंग फ्रॉम द टांग जीव भादो बाई चांटिंग हरे कृष्ण मन सेवनमुखी जीव भादो स्वामेव स्फुरत्त ही बिकम्स रिवी जे नाम से ही कृष्ण that is the perfection of chanting without any offenses then you will find the name is not different from krishna when you are chanting you will find krishna is dancing on your tongue this is the conclusion so we have to learn how to chant therefore in this hastras and the puranas the 10 kinds of offenses are described 
and Sila Jeeva Goswami has given very much stress to avoid these offenses. Shuddha uh, In the beginning we cannot chant pure form of the name because we are accustomed, but still by chanting process uh, then it becomes nama bhas. All must be Abhas means just like before sunrise you find the darkness is off, but it is not sunlight. Uh, it is different from sunlight, but still uh, there is the dawn. You can see everything distinctly. Similarly, first there is offensive name, and if you avoid, avoid the ten kinds of offenses, then gradually it becomes nama bhas. And Srila Haridas Thakur has said, nama charya, that by nama bhas one becomes liberated. Uh, there was some argument with Haridas Thakur and one Brahmin in the uh, office of uh, Raghunath Das Goswami's father and uncle. So there were some uh, high-level talks on these uh, nama uh, So by nama one becomes liberated. Uh, by chanting Hare Krishna mantra, fancy, one becomes materially happy or distressed. But when one comes to the stage of nama bhas, he becomes liberated. And when he chants pure name, there is Krishna Prem, just like Rupa Goswami. He was chanting, we are also chanting, but we are not in the stage of Rupa Goswami or Sanatana Goswami and Haridas Thakur. Uh, actually, if we come to that stage, then there will be Krishna praying, uh, love of Krishna. Just like Rupa Goswami said that what shall I chant with one tongue and two ears? If there are millions of tongues and trillions of years, I could chant something. And we cannot finish even sixteen down. Because we have not created our test for chanting. Uh, still we are in the nama parad stage. But don't be disappointed. Go on chanting. You'll come to the right position, nama bhas, then suddha nam. Everything requires gradual development. So this nama is also another incarnation of Krishna. Nama rupe kalikale Krishna avata. Name is, because name and Krishna is not different. Avinnatya nama namina. There is no difference. Here in the material world there is difference between the name and the substance. But although again in the absolute world there is no such distinction, the name and the person, the same, identical. So actually when we chant Hare Krishna mantra, we directly associate with Krishna because name is the incarnation of Krishna. Nama rupe Krishna avata. Uh, therefore, if you are sensible, then we should take very much uh, respectful attitude to the name because name and Krishna the same. Suppose Krishna comes here, how much respectful we shall immediately. Uh, so similarly, when we chant Hare Krishna mantra, we should know Krishna is there. Therefore, we should be very much cautious and respectful, not neglectful. 
that is offense that is offense uh, if we become inattentive that is offense you should know this try to have heart krishna is giving us chance to meet him in so many ways naam roop lila parikar vaishishta he is giving us chance in the form of name in the form of deity uh, in the form of his past times in the form of his paraphernalia uh, just like this bindavan bindavan is as good as krishna uh, chaitanya mahapurusha said it is not my manufacture uh, aradh bhagavan brijesh tanayo tad dhyamam bindavan Uh, as Krishna, the Brajendranath and Hari Krishna, as He is worshipable, similarly His Dham is worshipable. We should be very much respectful to Brajendran Dham. Otherwise, we will be offended. Dham aparad. Uh, Dham aparad. If we remain here in Brajendran. we should know that we are living with krishna and how much we should be cautious how much we should be careful if we are actually uh, understand what is dhama dhama is also krishna even the dhama we commit sinful activities then we are Ah, oh, what is called suiciding, committing suicide. Oh. It is a fact. You know the story of Jamalaj. So they were given the place in the dhamma, Brindavan dhamma, as a tree, but they had to waste time for so many hundreds years. Uh, although. There is guarantee. Anyone who is in dhamma, he will get the shelter of the lotus feet of Krishna. But not. Uh, why should you waste your time to become a tree or a monkey or a hog or a dog? Don't waste. You should be very careful. Don't commit any offense in the dhamma. Then. One life is sufficient to go back to home, back to God. Takta de hang punar janmanai thi, maami thi. If you actually live in Bindavan, carefully, uh, without committing any offense and sinful lie, then in this life you are going to Krishna. Krishna says, "Janma karma me dibham jiu jana thi takta." To live in Vrindavan means to know Krishna, how he appeared here, how he uh, played here, how he executed his past times here. Janma karma, dibham. These are all celestial, all transcendental. Jai Radha Madhava Kunya Vihar. So this is Vrindavan life of Krishna. So if we know Krishna, tattva, uh, this tattva we discussed this morning. Manushanam sahasesi koshti jatati siddhay, jatatam api siddhanam koshti bhitti mam tattva. So all those who are living in Vrindavan, they should try to understand Krishna tattva. That is their business. Uh, not that take advantage of Vrindavan and make some uh, unnavilas, gyan karma. No, that means we are wasting time. We'll get the chance because you have come to Vrindavan. Vrindavan is so powerful. But if we commit offense and sinful activities, it will be delayed. My Guru Maharaj used to say that don't waste time. 
Don't wait for another life. In this life, finish this business to understand Krishna and go back to home, back to God. That is required. Ah, if one is businessman, just like in business, they want to execute business free. Ah, ah, finish the business quickly. Similarly, because we see that such a devotee like Bharat Maharaj, because he was little attached to a uh, calf, dear calf, what is it called? Fawn. Uh, Fawn, yes. So he had to take the life of a dear next life. Just see, such a great devotee. But because he was little attached, jang-jang-vāpi-smaran-lo gītajatanti kalevaram. So we should be very careful uh, that even in Vrindava, if we miss the point, if we are attached to something, then we have to accept another life, either as beast or tree. Of course, the chance will be given to become a tree and beast in Vrindava. That is also profitable because next life he is going. Back to home, back to God. But why should we waste another life in this way? Uh, so, Krishna, Nama Rupi Avata. So, we should respect chanting of Hare Krishna mantra with very care, carefulness, cautious, so that we may not commit any offense. Then you are. Business is successful. Namnat Bala Jasai Papa Buddhi. If somebody thinks that I am living in Vrindavan, I am chanting Hare Krishna mantra. So if I do something sinful, what it will do? Eka Nam Krishna Name Jato Pap Hare Papi Hare Tato Pap Kuri So what sinful I am doing? Little sinful. Yes, little sinful will be excused. But if it is done, not willingly, but if you commit sinful activities willingly, daily, then you will be punished. That is laws of nature. Even if we are bhakta, you will be given chance, but you will have to be punished. Uh, therefore you must be very careful. We are chanting Hare Krishna mantra, means dealing with Krishna directly. Therefore, we must be very careful, cautious, respectful. Then it is nice, it is success. Read next. For example, great demons like Ravan, Kamsa, Hiranyakashipu were always thinking of Krishna. But they were thinking of him as their enemy. This sort of thinking cannot be accepted as bhakti or Krishna consciousness. Yes, as Ravan and Kansa was thinking of Krishna as enemy, similarly, if we think of Krishna that he will wash my sinful activities, that means you are thinking like Ravan and Kansa. Krishna should be thought favorable. Anukullena Krishna Anusilana. No, Pratikullena. No. Uh, you cannot think of Krishna and commit sinful life at the same time. Uh, that is Pratikur. Krishna does not want that is, you shall remain sinful because you cannot approach Krishna without being free. From sinful activities. Jesam antagatam papam. Krishna is pavitra, paramam, apapaviddham. These are the descriptions. Krishna is the supreme pure. You cannot approach the supreme pure being sinful. 
uh, and make Krishna your order supplier, that you go on committing sinful life and Krishna will wash it. Krishna washes it once, twice, thrice. But if you uh, uh, conscientiously go on, continue this sinful life, then you will have to be punished. So we should not think pervertedly like Ravana and Kansu. Uh, Kansu was always absorbed in thinking of Krishna. Also he got salvation, but not as associate. But he merged into the Brahma Ephalians. So these are the points. Anukulena Krishna Anusilana. We should execute cultivation of Krishna consciousness very favorably. Not unfavorably. Favorable means by which Krishna becomes pleased, by which your spiritual master becomes pleased, because when your spiritual master is pleased, Krishna is pleased. Just sap prasadat bhagavat prasad. So spiritual master is representative of Krishna, just like in office, you do not see the proprietor, but your immediate officer, if you can please, then you get promotion, increment, so many things. Similarly, Krishna sends his representative, acharya mang vijanya, nabamanneta karhichi. So, so pleasing the acharya means pleasing Krishna. Krishna Chakravati Thakur says, just sap prasadad bhagavat prasad. So anukulena Krishna anusilana means when you have accepted uh, the bona fide spiritual master, you should work in such a way that your spiritual master is pleased with you. Then you, uh, your path is very clear. Don't do anything which is against the will of the spiritual master. Uh, because we cannot see Krishna eye to eye at the present moment. The direction is coming through disciplic succession. Even parampara praptam even raja sayavidu. So we should follow favorably to cultivate Krishna consciousness then our life is successful. Go on. The impersonalists sometimes misunderstand devotional service in such a way that they divide Krishna from his paraphernalia and pastimes. For example, the Bhagavad Gita is spoken on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, and the impersonalists say that although Krishna is of interest, the battlefield of Kurukshetra isn't. The devotees, however, also know that the battlefield of Kurukshetra by itself has nothing to do with their business, but in addition they know that Krishna does not mean just Krishna alone. He is always with his associates in paraphernalia. Hmm. They are so-called pseudo-devotees. They say, what we have to do with Bhagavad-gītā? They think that they are so advanced uh, that they will jump over immediately to the Krishna's last nila. Uh, that means Krishna's lila in the Kurukhetra is not very much important for them. For now, Krishna's lila, either in the Kurukhetra or in Vrindavan, the same thing. We should know. Avinnatya uh, Namanami. So, better, first of all, read Bhagavad Gita, the preliminary study of Srimad Bhagavat. Uh, try to read or try to learn. Of course, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, there is everything. Uh, but for ordinary person, because Bhagavad Gita is the ABCD of spiritual knowledge. Uh, people even commit mistakes in studying the ABCD of spiritual knowledge. Uh, people have become so much degraded 
that they cannot understand even A, B, C, D of spiritual knowledge. Oh. They will make their own interpretation. Uh, such is the horrible condition. They will try to make minus Krishna, Bhagavad Gita. Go on reading Bhagavad Gita for millions of years, setting aside Krishna. That is scholarly. Uh, this is going on. A scholar means they say openly, I have seen Dr. Radha Krishna. When he is explaining, Manmanam Bhavamad Bhaktamad Jaji Mang Namaskuru, he is saying openly, it is not to the person Krishna. He is saying, just see the attempt. Uh, he is writing comments on Bhagavad Gita. And he's trying to make Krishna away, minus Krishna. Simply mental speculation. <coughs> ah. This is going on. We should be very careful. Ah. What is that? One? <coughs> the impersonalists. Uh, the impersonalists, they do not know that Krishna. And Krishna's body not different. They take it for acceptance that when God, uh, Brahma, comes, he accepts a material body. There is Mayavadi. Therefore, Krishna says, Avajananti Mangamurha Manusintanu Asita. He comes, Samavami Atma Maya. He comes as he is. Eh? Otherwise, how we can act so wonderfully? When he was on the lap of his mother, three months old, how he could kill the gigantic demon, Putana? He is not different from his body. Uh, uh, he simply appears according to the necessity. Krishna has no such difference, body and soul. He is full, complete, uh, spiritual. We have got in this conditional state uh, soul and body different. Dehi and deha. Dehi nasmin jatha dehi kaumāra jaubanang jara. So dehāntaram prāpti. Krishna hasn't got to uh, accept another body. Hmm. So this, these things we should know. Krishna is uh, complete, Purna Brahma. There is nothing like material and spiritual in Krishna's body. Go on. For instance, if someone says, Give me, give something to eat to the man with the weapons. The eating process is done by the man and not by the weapons. Similarly, in Krishna consciousness, a devotee may be interested in the paraphernalia and locations, such as the battlefield of Kurukshetra, which are associated with Krishna, but he is not concerned with simply any battlefield. He is concerned with Krishna, his speech, his instructions, etc. It is because Krishna is there that the battlefield is so important. No. This is the summary understanding of what Krishna consciousness is. Without this understanding, one is sure to misunderstand why the devotees are interested in the battlefield of Kurukshetra. Yes. Sometimes we are asked uh, that <clears throat> why Krishna induced Arjuna to become violent. Uh, yeah. There are so many so-called scholars that criticize Krishna, but they do not know what is Krishna. Uh, Krishna is absolute. In whichever He acts, it is the same thing. God is good. Uh, it does not mean when he fights in the battlefield of Kurukshetra, he becomes bad. No, he is still good. 
That is the conception of God. Absolute. He can do everything and anything. Uh, still, he continues to be the absolute truth. Uh, that is absolute truth. There is no relative understanding. This is good for God, this is bad for God. As God has uh, come before me to be judged by me, you cannot judge God, Krishna. Uh, whatever he does, just like Arjuna accepted Krishna. I accept whatever you say in total, without any distinction. That is acceptance of Bhagavad Gita and Krishna. Uh, that is the way of understanding Vedas. You cannot judge the conclusion of the Vedas. You have to accept as it is, because we are conditioned. We have got so many defects. Uh, we are illusioned. We commit mistake. Our senses are imperfect. So many defects. Brahm, Pramat, Vipralipsa, Karnapata. We want to cheat others. So therefore we cannot give perfect knowledge. We have to receive knowledge from the perfect. And who is better perfect than Krishna? Therefore, whatever Krishna says, whatever Krishna does, that is all good. There is nothing uh, criticizing. You cannot criticize Krishna. Uh, that is not possible. Uh, you cannot say why Krishna took part in the battlefield of Kurukshetra. Yes. He had business to do it because he appeared. Paritranaya sadhunam vinasaya He had to kill all the demons. That was his another business. Not only to dance with the gopis in Vrindavan, but he had other business to kill the demons. In Vrindavan also, so many demons were appearing daily, and Krishna was killing them. So that is another side of uh, Krishna's business. But if you study Krishna from your materialistic angle of vision, you will misunderstand. You should know Krishna's dancing with the gopis and Krishna's fighting in the battlefield of Krishna is the one and the same. That is Krishna consciousness. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.